Hello everyone. Uh, welcome uh, to a brand new session. Uh, in this session, we will learn how you can create a uh, EKS cluster from Kubernetes in AWS. So yeah, uh, myself Mansur Lazan. I'm DevOps architect in Technologic Solution. Uh, so in order to create a EKS cluster in AWS, we need to do some uh, basic prerequisites. The, as the prerequisites, IAM is the first one we need to create. IAM rules is actually allow your Kubernetes cluster to interact with your AWS resources and EC2 instances and other other uh, other resources that actually required by the EKS cluster. So for this, we'll be creating IAM role. Uh, uh, it, EKS requires several services to be accessed while you are creating uh, IAM role. So uh, in the select, this this is the window where you can create IAM role. So there are several types uh, you can use as a trusted entity. Uh, I'm not going to de in, in detail about all those options. So for the sake of this demo, we will be using AWS services. Uh, so then uh, this is the trusted entity type. Now the next thing we need to focus on use case. So what will be our use case? So our use case is EKS. So we'll be using EKS. Uh, in the EKS, we will choose EKS cluster. So this is for uh, allow your uh, EKS cluster to access AWS resources that are actually required to operate your EKS, cl uh, EKS cluster. So uh, select EKS cluster, click on the next. Uh, this is the default policy. Uh, we are not saying anything. Uh, we'll be saying this policy na role name as an EKS admin. And we will be clicking on the create role button. So once the roles is being created, we will add some more permission to it. So the next step is we will search for our role that we created. And on the permission tab, we will click on the add permission attach policy. So the first policy policy we need to add is EC2. Uh, at the moment, we require to give a full access. Uh, you can uh, trim down as per your requirement, or even you can create a custom policy as per your need. But at the moment, we are giving full access. Also, we are going to give full access to the VPC, so it can read and write to the VPC about like routing tables, subnets, anything, anything. And then uh, we need to give access to Route 53. This is not necessary, but uh, somehow uh, we will be using it uh in eks so yeah these are the three permissions we actually need to attach to our iam role so this is it yeah these are the four permission we actually uh need to provide uh to our eks cluster uh then uh we need to create eks cluster uh in, in the eks cluster so yeah we, we will click on the create cluster so here we will be saying test cluster and there are several uh, versions of Kubernetes available in AWS. So by default, the latest one is uh, uh, the default one. And if you want to launch uh, on older version, you can go and choose as per your need. So this is the uh, role that already selected because I have the only role. Uh, so yeah, uh, EKS admin is the service role that actually used by cluster. Uh, we are not using uh, secret encryption, uh, uh, but we can use uh, tags. So we can name it uh, as also the name is the default. We can say usage uh, testing. So yeah, uh, now we need to click on the next. In the next, we need to choose our VPC. Uh, since I haven't created any VPC, so I'm using the default one. Here, you need to choose your subnet. If you wanted to launch your uh, cluster in the private subnet, you can choose the private subnets. If you wanted to launch your subnet in the public, so you, you could choose anyway. Uh, the best practice is, is to choose the private subnets. Uh, so for, for your workload to be run. So uh, this is the security group. Uh, I'll be using the default security group uh here you can define either you need your eks cluster uh for publicly available or public and private or only private so uh, if you choose this option your cluster is publicly available and you can connect from anywhere uh in the world uh in the public and private gives you ability to control uh from uh outside of your vpc and worker node traffic uh will stay in in your vpc so cluster endpoint is accessible accessible from outside the world 
but your worker node traffic uh, to the endpoint will stay in the VPC. Like uh, your worker node can only communicate privately to your uh, API uh, or API scheduler and control plane components. Uh, in, in in the private cluster, uh, the uh, the endpoint and uh, worker node traffic uh, will stay in the VPC. Nothing is accessible from the outside. Uh, you can you can even manage the source address from you wanted to allow. Uh, you can connect to your API endpoint. Uh, at the point we are we are choosing a public. So yeah. Uh, so at here we are we are using networking component. Uh, so we are using. Uh, AWS VPC and CNI as a networking component uh, and networking driver. Uh, we are also using core DNS for our DNS service and Kube proxy. These are the build version we are choosing. Uh, there are some older version as well, but this is the default and stable version uh, as of now. Uh, so you can you can choose or whatever you want. Either you want to go for the latest one or you want to stay with, stick with the, the uh, default version. I'm going to, I, I rely more on AWS, so I choose the default version. At this point, you can you can enable the API logging, auditing, and authentication logs. This is specifically for logging purpose. If you wanted to log your uh, all events on your API servers, or uh, on uh, if you want to do, uh, enable the audit logging uh, for your cluster access, so you can enable. But at the moment, since uh, we are in just a demo, uh, so we are not configuring all those option, options. So uh, if you wanted to enable scheduler log, control manager log, authenticator log, audit log, API server log, so you can enable by clicking this just button. So we are not changing this anyway. Uh, click on the next. So yeah, uh, it says review and create. If we need, uh, this will tell what uh, components and what things uh, we have set up. Uh, we will be creating a click on the create button. Okay, one thing uh, which is bad, uh, one subnet uh, in the uh, networking, uh, we need to choose subnet from ABC. Uh, so what we will be doing, we will be choosing subnet from ABC. Uh, three subnets are quite enough. So yeah, let's so let's go. I'm not creating. So cluster creation is in progress. It will take around uh, 15 minutes. So we will connect you in the next video. So stay tuned for part two. Uh, in the part two, we will see how we can deploy our demo application in our Kubernetes cluster. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned for part two.